Hello everyone, welcome back to Manufactoria 2022. We have one more puzzle to go before we unlock the secret post-endgame, I guess. Who knows what this is. Um, yesterday we did Dough Spinner, and we made kind of a meal of it, haha. -ha. Um, but got through it, and I started thinking about Calzone folder afterwards. And I, I, I have an idea that I think should work for this, so maybe, maybe we'll check this one out next. Um, have we ever read the text for this, by the way? I don't know, I don't think so. A calzone is like a pizza folded in half. An engineer prizes simplicity. That was my plan for our calzone robot. Fold pizzas in half before baking. Jada suggested that approach might not produce a completely edible result, and I told her, edibility is subjective and lower co parts costs are objective. Clearly I won that argument. That's not how you make a calzone? You don't just fold a pizza in half? Haha. So here's, remember our goal is to duplicate every input. Like we get a red, we want two reds. We get a blue, we want two blues. And we're guaranteed they're alternating. So we could again do something similar like uh, to what we did in holding something. Dough spinner, that's right. Um, where we start by adding a marker at the end of the tape that tells us we've gotten there. But in this case, uh, I don't think we have to. We will definitely know when we've gotten to the other side of the tape because we'll see two of one color in a row. And that will either be because we duplicated the, you know, say, red that was at the beginning in this case, or that we ran into a red followed by another red. Uh, right? Like we looped around. Um, and so, I think when we, when we do run into that duplication, we'll need to know whether there were two reds or three reds in a row, because that'll tell us whether the, the red that we just saw is one that was part of the first red that we duplicated, or was its own red that we still need to duplicate. And after doing that, we'll have screwed up the order of the tape, because we'll have read part of the first symbol. Maybe. Um, maybe or, or always? Always, right? We'll have read part or all of the first symbol, and maybe some of the second as well? Yes, that's correct. But at that point, we should be able to... Um, fix up the tape and send it out. So what about, though, like a single input? Is there something special about that? Suppose that I got just a single red, and I turned it into a double red, and then I read ahead. I would see two reds in a row, and I would say, oh, the tape must be over. Is there another red coming? And it would be blank. And I would say, oh, okay. I guess the whole input was just these two reds I accept. So I think that I don't need to special case that at the beginning. It can be its own thing at the end, probably. So let's just, like, get started with that. Um, and see, there'll, there'll be complications at the end of the program. But the beginning, I think, is straightforward. Um, so we read a blue, and one thing we could do would be to immediately write out two blues and then continue. Or we could look at the next one before deciding whether to write two blues, and I don't know which of those is better. Right, and say, if, oh, if we get another blue right now... I mean, I guess it's, like, more flexible, probably, to wait. So let's, like, um... It, it probably... Mm, I don't know. Because I can always write... If I read two blues in a row, and it turns out it would have been good to write two blues in that case, I can just write two blues after that, right? So let's say I... do this. Mm, that. Right, I read a blue, and then I say, oh, is this... Oh, hang on, this should be... Mm -hmm. Right, because two in a row is something special. We don't want to loop in that case. It's actually if we get... Um, if we get a blue and then a red we should write two blues and then move into the state where the last thing we saw was a red. 
This looks very much like our kind of usual 5x3 thing for reading while remembering the last token, except we're writing twice instead of once. So likewise, if we read a red, we should probably... Which way do I want this to face exactly? If I read a red followed by a blue, I should go up there, right? Might as well do it with red stamps. Like that. It's kind of unpleasant that it's symmetric in this way, and I can't have both of them grow forward like here and here, but because of the way the pipes are laid out, it's sort of hard to do that, I think. I mean, I don't know. I guess I could, right? Um, I just put a, I like drag this even further over, put pipes here and here and here. Wait, not here though. So I guess if the tape is empty, we we kind of have to accept it, and that could happen. But the tape can never be empty in these cases, so we don't have to cover what's up here. We just have to cover going over this away. Wait, I don't need that anymore. So suppose that I read two blues in a row. Either, well, certainly the tape has wrapped around. But I don't know whether what I read was the, la the final blue on the tape and then half of the two blues that I wrote to the beginning, or I recently read the last red and what I've now written, what I've now consumed is the, the two blues at the beginning. So I think I have to read again to discover which of those cases I'm in. If I see a third blue, then what has happened is that the tape ended with blue. And I now need to write out four blues, kind of, right? But I need to, like, reposition the tape somehow. Cause I, I definitely want four blues, but I want two of them before... Mm. Let's just run a test and... Because here, our goal isn't to reverse the tape, so I can't just, like, ugh. I can't do what I did before of making some adjustment, minor adjustment to the beginning of the tape to fix what happens at the end.
I would have to reread the whole thing up to this point somehow. <laughs> I have to tell you, what's in my head right now is like, what if I wrote five blues? <laughs> um, maybe three would be enough. But uh, then if I, like, read three of them, maybe five is right, though. After reading three of them, I know two more are coming, right? And so I don't have to read those. <laughs> um... By the way, we'll, we'll, we'll step back a minute. Pleasing Fungus has replied in the Discord to my posting my horrible dough spinner solution. He says he likes it and it looks like a skull, which, <laughs> yeah, I guess it kind of does. Okay, fair enough. Um, okay, so... I, I might be crazy, but I think writing five blues is great. <laughs> um... You know, it, it probably won't be getting me any medals. Um, now, what if I read only two blues and then there was a red? That means the, the that that's much simpler, isn't it? The tape is, it starts with blue and it ends with red. So I can just read the second of those reds and then write blue, blue, red, red, I think, to get everything back into order. Let's test that. that that's easy to test, right? So we think we can handle tape that looks like this. I know I could skip, but I'm just like, I don't know. We read a blue, and we write two, or we read a red, and yeah, okay. Uh -oh. Is this right? Have I made an error? Oh, it went down the other side. Something doesn't seem right. For example, my solution. Um... Oh, I, I don't handle that. I handle I handle tapes that end with two reds. Because tapes tapes that start with blue and have an even number of symbols, which is the same as tapes that end with red. So if I run this, run me to there. So now the tape, I read two blues, and I'm looking, is there a third blue? No, it was red. So read them both, and then write this. So that seems good. And we just have to handle the case where... We get to a third blue, meaning we consumed part of the first, the blue that the tape started with in, in a case like this. We found three blues in a row. So maybe maybe there's something better than just than 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 this crazy five blue solution. Is there some way we could transform this tape, the tape on top, to the tape on bottom easily? I think yes, right? Well, I don't know about easily. Oh, also, there's another case that I didn't mention here, which is what about a single blue as input? We do have to be special about that, but not very, right? 
we can just say if you read two blues and then the tape is empty, then you go here. Um, so let's let's fix that real quick. Okay. And if you read a third blue. then you know the input wasn't empty. So if it started blue and ended blue, there must be a red in the middle, at least one. So we can read that if we want. Um, and if we did read that, then all we would have to do is write blue, blue, red, red, blue, blue. <laughs> right? It's crazy, you know, having six stampers in a row, it suggests a poor understanding of, like, boundary conditions and stuff, but, um, I think it's doable. So, when we get to here... Wait. How exactly is it that I... I read three blues, and yet the input is looking, like, balanced. There's not... I didn't read four, did I? No. Oh, because I haven't yet written the double blue for the one I just read. I see. So the third blue is one unduplicated blue and then one duplicated blue. Got it. So now I read red, red, and then I have six stampers in a row. That's my elegant solution. It goes here. And I... I can just copy all of this, right? Everything is symmetrical about this point uh, to the right of here, so... It's beautiful. <laughs> okay, it's wrong. It's wrong! Oh, yeah. So wait a minute, we never will get here. We're never gonna just read two blues and have the tape be empty. Because that would mean we read one blue and the tape was empty. Got it. So I can actually erase this. I think I might be making a squid this time. <laughs> So if there was just one red and that was it, we accept. If there was just one blue and that was it, we accept. Nope, still wrong. Still broken for one red. Oh, I need to write two of them, obviously. All right, well, we, we succeeded at Calzone folder. As a celebration of the finished calzone bot, I suggested we should eat its first product together. Data politely declined, so I ate the whole thing myself. Some victories are bittersweet. Yeah, kind of unsurprising that this is not ideal. Twelve? Oh my god, I gotta talk to Castle. That's insane. How did you do that? <laughs> Does it look more aesthetically pleasing if we, like, um, if we do this? Yeah, now it's like, um, like, like a, a, a crusader's helmet or something. You got the little eye slits here. I guess they don't usually have a nose slit, do they? Maybe. Maybe, no, this is the mouth, the mouth grill. That's what I'm imagining. And then, like, up here we almost maybe have some eyes. I don't know. Anyway, so how are we, um, how are we for time? That was 20 minutes. I guess we have time, basically, to go look at the final area, maybe? Unless there's some puzzle here that I want to have a go at. Not Fruit Crusher. I did everything here already. I still, like, I don't know. Let's look at Venturesome. I didn't think of any clever ways to find Powers of Two when the input is weird. Like, you have to... You have to be able to cut the input in half every time. 
Um, is it is it really the case that if you just see a three, you can definitely go and remove a three from the input for if it's a power of two? So like, I think if there's a if if you want to divide something by two. Um, if there's any three at all, so, right, what we're being asked to do is do repeated division by two. Um, if there's any three at all, there must be another three to remove, otherwise the parity would be wrong. So that's fine. And if there's any two, must there be another two? No, that's not the case. For example, eight has a two and then it could have three more twos, but it could have two threes as well. Do I have green? I do. So, I mean, one obvious solution appeal uh, occurs to me, which is just to like pre-process the input, replacing every pair of threes with three twos. And then you go over it and look for a power of two number of twos, basically, which we already done in a previous puzzle. Is there something better? some way to handle, like... Well, wait a minute. I was talking about eight, and that's kind of important, isn't it? Because if there's a... Th if... <sighs> to divide a... A, t a value in half... If there's a pair of threes, you shouldn't necessarily remove both of the three, like one of the threes, should you? I mean, I guess you should remove at least one of them, but I, I need to somehow get to the state where there's two twos after doing that, which is sort of hard. So I think like pre-processing the input is clever enough for me. It's not gonna win me any prizes but it should be okay. Um, so let's start by stamping a green in there. And then as long as there are two, so we start a scanner now, right? Um, as long as there are twos, we just write them back. When we get to a three, we go into this new state um, where we're scanning again. And if we see a red, I think I need to make a little more room here. If I see a red, <laughs> um, then great. I write back three twos instead. I think I could pack this more efficiently, for example, by going like this. Fine, let's do that. And if I see a blue, I just write the, the blue back. And if I see a green, I can reject. Because there was an unbalanced three. And now I've reduced this to a previously solved problem. Where was that problem, where we have powers of two? Would have been over here somewhere, but oh my god, I have no idea where. The, the puzzle names are all unhelpful. Forget it. Let's just do it again. Now I have an input that is exclusively blues, bracketed by a green. And so... 
I have a scanner here. If it's empty, that should be impossible, right? Well, no. The input could have been empty. We could special case the empty input here, or we could special case it here. I don't think it much matters. Um, actually, it does matter a little bit, because then I can avoid going over these quite... Can't I? I can, like, instead of using this conveyor belt, I can come in through here, be a bit faster. And better laid out as well. Um, so, okay, let's grab this. And then, basically, what I want to do is have a green-white scanner, where green... Um, I guess rejects, right? Yeah. So now I don't need to worry that this, that the input might be empty here. On the other hand, like, I could just handle this, right? Well... is empty here. That could be because it was originally empty, assuming I don't do this special case. Um, oh, oh my gosh, I, I, I wrote a blue instead of a green. Um, or I could write my loop so that if it sees a single blue only, then it like goes to the scanner, and, but that seems like what's the point, right? So I think if we're going to try and I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really optimizing for anything here, am I? Um, by doing this pre-processing step, I think. So I could, I could say, you know, whatever, we'll just do this extra step here, but I think, like, it's kind of fine to just, if the input was empty, reject here. Of course, if it's red, that's impossible. So what I need to do now... ...is test it again. If it's green, we can accept there was exactly $2. And if it's blue, we carry on. And what we carry on to is removing pairs of twos. So I think that that looks like that, where if there are no pairs of twos left, we just come down here and say, great, we succeeded in dividing by two. If there's one two, then we look for another two. And if it's there, we replace one of them. And if it's not, we reject. Right? What does this do? It fails on two, two. So I wrote a green. I copied all the blues, that was fine. And then I read my green and I replaced it. I read a single blue. I 
I went up here. Oh, I forgot to replace the blue when I... Wait. I read one blue. Oh, I need to be entering at a different part of this loop. This loop has to be separate from this, but, but I don't want to enter at the beginning of it. Um, I want to say basically if I've... I've already read two. Oh, no, hang on. I think I just need to write one of them back at this point. The one that I read, and then I enter this loop. So in fact, um, a better way to do that, I guess, would be to enter at this point. Quite sure what I'm doing here. Let's just put it back where it was. We're not we're not really optimizing. We're not gonna get any metals no matter what I do here. So I could route up to here is my point, but let's just not and see what happens. Yeah. And for close on any metals, maybe I'll go back and work on it. Our auto investors quickly found the fastest growing thing around, our company. They used our own capital to buy control and demanded we oust our old, slow-moving leadership, starting with sales. Marcus, to my surprise, was sincerely fine with it. He was ready to retire and let robots do everything for him. I didn't get it. Who'd want to stop working? Oh. What? I meddled on everything? Pleasing Fungus, you need to uh, check yourself before you wreck yourself. These are horrible solutions, I'm sorry to tell you. Um... I mean, okay, I guess I might as well, like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Show me the metals, the, 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 the graph. Surely everyone's as good, yeah. These employees are just bad at this level. We're, we're like, the mode everywhere. Okay. So I, I, I can at least improve this a bit. Um, there's my reduced stamper solution, right? 14. And I'm just stunned that we did well on area at all. Were other people trying to actually deal with... I mean, you could deal with reds in the middle, but it seemed like it... I don't know. I thought I might be costing myself too much with this whole thing here, but... I guess all that said, it's really only like three or four extra stampers, basically? Well, no. There's, there's all this. It's like six extra, but apparently it's hard to not do this, I guess? That was what I thought. That's why I did it, but... Okay. So that's... Are there any easy area improvements to make? Oh, it's just so impossible to read these scanners. This one's going up, right? No, it's going left. No, it's going up. I read two blues and I wrote one back. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not going to work anymore on this. I got I got 3 medals. How how sad can I be? Cognomist, do we want to try this at all today? I don't think so. Produce the money before the minus. Or before the... Oh. <laughs> These were ones before, and now they're minuses. The, the symbol looked the same, but we were treating them as ones, which was kind of like rotated. And now it's also a minus. That's kind of cute. Um...
So obviously, if the left has a symbol and the right also has that symbol, you can just erase it from both of them and then keep going until the right is empty, right? Uh, and then the left will be your answer. But what if the left has a symbol that is missing from the right? What do you do? If the symbol on the left that is missing from the right is a three, I guess there could be a lot of such things, right? We could have three, 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 three on the left and on the right have two, 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 two. So kind of an obvious and tempting way to, to do this is to think of it like subtraction, because it is, and to look at the right first and say, okay, um, the beginning of the right tape is a two. Therefore, let's try to subtract two from the left. And if there is a two, great, you can remove it. But what if the first symbol you find is a three? Um, then I guess you keep looking through the left until you find either a three, a, another three, in which case replace them both with two twos, or you find a two, in which case replace it with a three. So what if the symbol, or, or, or you find none of those, in which case the answer is zero. What if the right starts with a three? You go through the left. The first thing you find, if it's a three, you cancel them. If, um, if it's a two, well, you have to keep going. If you find a three, you put back the two you were holding. If you find a two, uh, then you still can't quite do it. You keep scanning until you find either a three, in which case put down both of the twos you were carrying, uh, or a third two, in which case... Wait. Right, in which case you erase all three twos and put a three down. You turned a six into a three. So that seems like it should work. But it is somewhat unpleasant to have to go to the right first and work from there, right? We have kind of an unpleasant start by copying stuff step. Um, and I think you can do exactly the same thing in the other direction. If you have a three here, you search for a three on the right to cancel it with, right? Um... And in that case, you great. You, you're still representing the same subtraction. Likewise, twos. And if you find something on the left, mm, that you can't. And, and and if you can if you can make change as we were doing in the other direction, that's fine. You can do that. Right. You read a three from the left. You read three twos from the right and you replace that with one three. That's also fine. That still maintains balance. But what if you read something from the left and it's more than is present on the right? Then don't things get a little tricky? Maybe they don't. Um, right, like if I read a two from the left, and I look on the right, and the right is empty, then the answer is just two. 
But if I read a three and what's on the right is a two, the answer is just zero. And that's kind of the only way I could have more on the left than the right, isn't it? More on the right than the left. What if I read like a three from the left, and then I'm like, okay, let's start looking through the right to see what I can find. And I find like two twos and no threes. I can't at that point say, oh, I give up. Like the, the answer is zero, because there might be more threes and twos on the left. Um... Right, there's, there's only two twos on the right, but there could be a zillion threes. No. There's no threes, we said that. That, yes. But I've now, like, picked up a three from the left, and on the right I've found no way to reduce by the right amount. So I think actually doing it the way that I thought might be clever, where we just read something from the left and try to cancel it from the right, might be broken. I think we have to do it in kind of the... the way that seems obvious, I guess, which is to remove something from the right and then try to match that on the left. And if you ever can't... Well, let me think again. Suppose I have a three on the right. And all I can find on the left is two twos. At this point, I'm not stuck, whereas I was before. Because now I know that the left doesn't, there's, there's at least, hmm. On the left is exactly four, and on the right is at least three. So I can just say, oh, the answer is zero. Okay, well, I wasn't really planning to do a Cognomist today, but I think I can. It'll just be a kind of long video. So let's let's just do that. So first of all, we... What am I doing? Here we go. That's how you write a green. It could be a yellow, but I don't know. Green's nice. Um, we write a green. And we start by just like copying the entire input to the next yellow. Um, ah, there we go. And I think we might as well just replace that yellow with a green at this point. Oh, the yellow is so pretty, isn't it? Um, Now we're looking at the first symbol on the right. And there may be a green coming, so we should use the red, blue, green scanner. If it's green, then we've run out of stuff to subtract and we have the answer already. We just need to get rid of the yellow. Oh, wait a minute. Does that mean I could not do the yellow stamp yet? I think so. Yeah. Um, well, but then I would need two yellow stamps, one on either side of this. But I guess that's better than like needing an entire copy of the input in this case, right? So if we're being asked to subtract two, 
and we look at the right. Yeah, 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 yeah. This, this seems fine. Um, so I'm going to have the try to loop around this way to get back to here. Um, I've written back my yellow, and I've, I've, I've grabbed a three. Now I need to copy everything from the right side until I read my green, so... Like this. And immediately, I believe, right back my green. Now I go looking in the input for, hopefully, I can just find a red. Wouldn't that be nice? Um, and we're looking for a minus, a yellow this time, because it could be, we might not find the, the, the red, or it, we might not find enough change, basically. Um, if we find a red, then we're done. We can just remove that red. Um, We'll need to copy the rest of the input. Hmm, that's what this does, though. This copies the input until the yellow, right? So I think what I should do is this. And I can just reuse that. Uh, these are facing the wrong way. I guess I could even do that. And if I... If I encounter a yellow at this stage, that means the entire left tape was empty. There was, there was nothing left. And so I just need to like output zero by removing the rest of the tape, basically. which means copying till the yellow and then copying to the green, which I kind of hate. But I think we're gonna have to write that module a couple, use that module a couple times. I don't know, so we... Let's leave that for the moment. Let's say we find a blue. Well, we clearly can't just subtract and have a one. So we have to now start looking for something else. Um, and again, it's the yellow that would be the end. Uh, in which case, We again go, oh, we output zero because we were asked to subtract three and all we found was two. But if we find a three, then we can put back the two that we were hanging on to and just leave. Right? We, we, we took a red away from the right and then took a blue and a red from the left, but put a blue back, back so we're balanced on that. And if we get a second blue, we're still not done. We 
we need to go looking again for something. Um, we need to, uh, right, 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 right. Uh, so like, I mean, are we gonna have space here? I think this is about right. Um, so we go in here. If we find a red, then we can just put back the two blues that we were holding on to and go up, right? Isn't that nice? How, how pleasant. Um, if we get a third blue, then we have a six. Six on the left, three on the right, right back a three, and then leave. Kind of inconvenient to do that right now. Is there some better way to do that? Huh. I just noticed something funny. We don't need this stamper. We could jump into here instead. I kind of want to like try to minimize stampers while I'm solving this, I think. So I should probably do that. Um, so let's, let's actually have this go like here, right? Oh, now I actually could put uh, this guy in here, couldn't I? Actually, nicely compact. And I think it's not so horrible to just scoot this down a tiny bit. Ah, I was going to say. Scoot this down a tiny bit, write a red, and so on. But remember, we're, we're trying to reuse this, so it's actually now too compact. this to be able to go up here. Like that. That means these guys have to be getting to here. So? And then connect all three of these into like my failure mode. Where I just copy the entire tape and, and turn everything into mush and zero. And is there anything on the left tape at this point? There's not, right? I never wrote anything back, and I just found out the left left half left half is empty. So I can basically here just do a, a green style scanner with an accept at the end. 
So I believe this handles so far the case where the right tape contains only threes. So I could write, for example, blue, blue, red, blue, blue, and subtract red, red from this. I'm sure there will be something wrong, and then this whole thing will be a mess to debug, but let's just optimistically imagine that it's correct. Oh, well, for example, I never wrote back the yellow stamp here. That needs to happen somewhere. Or wait, no. Oh, it's the green that needs to be rewritten. What am I thinking? Oh wait, no, there's still a green. How did you get there? Oh, it got written here. And the yellow's being handled as well. Did I accidentally do it right? Nope. Too many twos. Okay, so what what should have happened here? We read a red and we put a yellow back saying, okay, I'm done with this three. And I copied all the way, all the rest. And then I looked for a three but didn't find it. Instead I found a two. Then I looked for two and I looked for a red and still didn't find it, but I found another two. So I came here and I found a third. Blue. So I came back here and I wrote a red, which makes sense. Or no, hang on. But I didn't find a third blue. I found a red instead. I took that red away and wrote back the two blues I was hanging on to. Ah, too many. I didn't remove this one. That was the point of all this, was that I don't need that stamper. Yes, okay. So now we have to handle the case of subtracting two. Which is easier, because you never have to look for three of something, only for two of them. Okay, um... Unfortunately, I can make both of- and fortunately, that was not unfortunately. I can make both of these pipes and still manage to reuse these entry slots, I believe. Um... So give me a reader. No, hang on. Well, I, I do need a reader, I guess, but... More than anything, what I need is specifically a thing that copies to the end. Why do I, I usually do vertical mirroring instead. So copy the yellow to the end of its, its road. And then read something. If it's blue, I can just move on, right? Hang on, do I have a just move on case here? Or I get to this? I think I don't. Something's not right on my left side, I feel like. Or on my, on my red side. What happens if I read a red and then immediately read a red? Mistake. I'm going here instead of here. What I needed was that, so that red comes here. No, then it goes there. I need like a third exit 
way from here. I don't have a lot of vertical space to work with. Obviously there's tons of space, but I just don't enjoy the idea of having to rotate my whole factory around. Um, or, or chunks of it. I, I imagine I'll get misaligned somehow. And yet, what more can I do? <laughs> so take that up and then write all the things that I actually want. Like I want an up arrow there. I want an up arrow there. Here, I want a pipe so that I can go that way. It's just embarrassing. Look at this. Anyway, so if I find a blue, then it's very simple what to do, sort of. Yes, just this. Copy the remainder of the input. If I find a red, wait a minute, how did I imagine that I would be getting to here? Or to here, rather? Ah, I was gonna go through here, got it. So I actually need to go a bit further on this. To re-enter this section. And now if I find a red followed by a blue, I can consume the blue. Sadly, it looks like I don't really have room the way I'm doing it. Um, I mean, I guess I could do that. Now there's room over here. <laughs> um, is that enough? If I see a yellow here, I want to come like all the way down there, right? Oh, it's so painful. Okay, so I think maybe turning left here was a uh, optimistic. I think maybe I need to turn right and like... leave some space for myself to route up here. So let's like, um, let's delete this stuff. Grab this and this. Oops. Yeah, that's still right. Um, but what I wanted to do was rotate it. Oh, this is, that is rotating. It just doesn't look like rotating. I got it. Put it like there. So I have this space to work with to decide, well, right. Put it like that. Now there are three different paths I could take to up here, which is exactly how many I need to decide whether I want to come to here or here or here, right? So those are the three kind of continuations I might have. And it's kind of convenient to be heading down anyway, because I want to get to here sometimes anyway. So we're reading green flavored. And if we do see a green, We just go there. There wasn't enough on the left to make up the deficit on the right. Supposing that instead we see a red, 
we need to continue working, right? Because we don't know what to do yet. But if I see a blue... Then it's sort of easy to know what to do. So what I'm going to do is have blue... Head to the exit already. Oh wait, blue can just come in through here. It doesn't need this. Like that, right? Oh, this is backward. Wait, what am I even doing? Oh, yeah, yeah, this is when I saw a blue. So this is the case where I don't want to write anything. I want to go here. No. Here. That's the case where I don't do any extra writing on the way in. Oh man, okay. Well, I can scoot everything back to the left, and now I have plenty of space here to decide which of these three paths to the north I take. If I see a red, what I must do is scan again. And then I just decide which of these I go to based on what I see. If it's, um... If it's green, then I was trying to subtract two from three, and the answer is zero, because I can't write one. But if I see a red, Then I've seen two reds now, right? I want to get to this node. <laughs> Very funny. So I didn't actually need this to be a pipe, because I never go through here. Right, because I want to write back two blues, and that's what this node does. We're, we're challenging the, um... We're gonna see if I manage to run it. God damn it! Run out of time on this one due to trying to save on stampers. Um... And if I read a blue... then I want to come back in via the red, right? Where I, I wanted to subtract a two. I got here. I found a red. And then another red, so that was six. I subtracted two, which means I write two blues, all right. Tell me, tell me how bad this is. Am I, am I going to run out of time? Well, the input... I didn't run out of time on this input, I, I hope. <laughs> um, zero minus three. Okay, what should that be, please? So I, I know that what I'm trying to remove is a three. I got that from here. Oh, there's just nothing here. Ah, when I was scooting this up, I didn't notice this. Um, where is it supposed to go? It's supposed to go to here, right? So I can just toss that belt in. Okay, now we have 3 minus 2 is a problem. So we copied the 3, and then we, we, read, the, we read a 2, so we know we're trying to subtract 2. Oh. oh, this is supposed to point down. To get to here. Okay, now 0 minus 2 is wrong. Oh, is this supposed to point right and it's wrong as well? No, hang on. Stop. 
So I read a two. I copied the remainder of what you're subtracting, which is nothing. So I copied the whole input, which was nothing, and then I put back the minus. Then I looked at the first in... Mm. I'm remembering the minus, and I'm removing the first thing from the, the right side. I'm replacing the minus, and then copying the remainder of the right side, which is empty, and then replacing my equal sign. Okay. So I'm at the right spot to start reading the left, and I'm looking for... Ah. The problem is that my this node does not handle there being a minus in the front. Wait, that's the wrong kind of scanner. That was supposed to remove the, uh, the yellow, wasn't it? Also, this one thinks there might be a green here. Am I crazy? Shouldn't that be yellow? So I can make that consume the yellow. But if I get here, there could easily be a green or, or, or a yellow, right? So that would break very quickly. Yeah, see? That one was supposed to be green or yellow, not green. Because we're on the left half now. We're still wrong. Six minus two should be four, I agree. And we, we attempted to write something in for that case, but got it wrong evidently. So, right, six minus two. So we've copied that, we've removed the two, we find a red and then a red. We need to write back two blues. Uh oh. Where is this going? Oh no, it's going to the right. Oh, that arrow's pointing the wrong way. It's going down here. That's where we do that. Well, we're still wrong on 6 minus 2, huh? Oh yeah, this goes nowhere. As always, the routing is the part that I'm the worst at. Incredibly, this is com correct. Marcus did his best, but he was having a hard time selling our economists or their predictions. Some of what they suggested seemed bizarre even to me. 50% unemployment and a 200% growth in GDP? If these predictions were even near right, and I was sure I'd worked out the bugs, the near future was going to be very different. Dismal? Maybe, maybe not. Oh, this, yeah, the robot utopia where nobody has to work and you make more stuff. Yeah, so I did make scanners and stampers uh, by, by a mile. Um, my time and area are abysmal, and that was sort of as I planned. I think this might be a new record on area for me. 238 might even beat my whatever was highest before. That's fine. I'll take it. So there's still some puzzles we haven't done, like... Um, not very many, though, right? We have the Fruit Crusher... And, um... Rocket Scientists. And then we have, like, two more in here, and that's it. So tomorrow we're gonna go check out Meta Robotics. Okay. Oh no, Binary! The part that was hardest in the original one. That's what I'm guessing is going on. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Next time.